So straight out of the box, the Tudio Solio 1 is an amazing bike. It comes with motorcycle brakes, awesome suspension, and these thick knobby tires, which are a few things that I really appreciated about it. But it only comes stock with about 2,000 watts of power, which is good enough for most people, but it's not good enough for me. So after scouring my e-bike collection and putting together this 72 volt, 10,000 watt kit, I was ready to install it on this bike and give this bike the insane power it deserves. And the best part is I filmed the entire process for your enjoyment. But before we get into it, make sure to go ahead, hit that like button, leave a nice comment down below, and most importantly, subscribe. We just hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel, which is huge. So thanks to all of my subscribers for making it happen. Our new goal is 100,000 subscribers, and it's gonna take you guys to help this channel get there. So hit that subscribe button, and let's get right into it. So the first order of business was to strip all of the old paneling and electronics out of this bike because as you know, we are doing a complete 72 volt overhaul. So these stock 48 volt electronics have got to go. So after about 45 minutes of unscrewing, we had all of the stock electronics as well as the paneling off of this bike and it was time for the moment of truth. Will the motor I have for this bike fit right into this cavity or will I have to do some modifications to the frame to get this motor in? Well, as I feared, it did not fit in right away, which means I have to get creative to get our motor mounted. Fortunately for me though, the process ended up being pretty easy and here's how it went. First, the process started with cutting into my frame using a Dremel because I needed to move the motor back far enough to actually get this to work. At first, I thought this was going to be a slow and difficult process because, I mean, come on, cutting into your frame is scary, but it actually went pretty easy. I just made sure to take it slow and steady, and after about 35 minutes of cutting, we made a breakthrough. And our motor just seems to fit, but... Not quite, we, we still need to uh, sand this down and, and get it all smooth. For the sanding and motor mounting process, I took the bike and motor to my buddy Sheldon's workshop. Yep, it's reversed. Right? There we fucking go. Look guys, I know the proper way to do this shit. We're just prototyping and bleeding. Maybe chugging a couple of PBRs while we do it. All right, so here's what we did today. We got this motor mounted. Yeah, you can see this thing is not going anywhere. And then we also got this ghetto ass sprocket on here. You can see there's some, some crappy welds holding it on. Whether this is gonna break loose and kill us is to be determined. We'll see about that and we'll get a better sprocket on there as soon as we can. Anyways. All right, guys, so we are back from the shop. As you can see, we got our beautiful new motor in there. The next step is we have our electronics. We have our Sabaton 72 150 amp controller. We have our 72 volt 40 amp hour battery. We have to figure out where those are gonna go on our frame. I sort of have an idea of where we're gonna put these, but I don't know exactly how we're gonna get everything mounted and uh, put in this bike properly, but we're gonna figure it out. 
I first start this process by measuring out the inside of my frame. This is not because I don't know if my battery is going to fit in here. I already know everything's going to fit, but this is so that I can glue foam to the inside of my frame so that the vibrations coming from this bike don't end up ruining our battery. All right, so I forgot to film myself gluing in the foam on the sides. You just gotta believe that I did it and, and that it didn't just spawn there, but here we go. Let's get this last piece in here. I think I'm gonna wanna get rid of this really quick because it's doing us no good anymore. This After sliding in our battery and getting that all nice and snug, it was time to see how I was going to get my controller to fit in this bike. And as you can see, I had an idea which just may work. So after installing our controller, it was time to connect the controller to our motor and battery. The only hard part about this is making sure that the wires don't break, but the entire process is pretty simple and intuitive, and there's instruction manuals with every controller on how to connect it up to your battery and motor. And after hooking everything up, you know I had to put the chain on to test if this bike actually would turn on and work. There you have it, fellas. But we're not done with this bike. We still gotta organize all this crap right here. We still gotta figure out how we're gonna get our seat on with this battery. So the strap for organizing these wires so that this bike doesn't look so damn ugly was to throw them into a little tool bag that I got with another e-bike. This actually worked surprisingly well and I was able to cover it up with this little panel which came with the original bike, you probably saw me take it off earlier in the video. The only problem with this is the motor I'm using does tend to overheat so I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't get enough airflow to the motor but it ended up looking like this. And of course the last thing we needed to do was modify our stock seat so that I would fit on this bike with our new battery. This was actually very easy. I used a Dremel to cut across the plastic part and then I just used a kitchen knife to cut through that foam. And the end result actually looked a lot better than I thought it would. And finally, after all of that work, we were ready to get this 72 volt, 10,000 watt masterpiece on the road. Anyways guys, so we got this thing up and running. It is absolutely sick. Um, it's not perfect though. I'm noticing a few issues with sort of the, the whole chain system, um, especially when I try to like rev the throttle and, and kind of go slow. I get, I get a whole bunch of feedback from my chain. I'll try to show you that in a bit. It seems to get better and worse sort of as I ride. Um, and this, this really just means you know, that I'll need to, to adjust this, right? Look, see if I go full throttle, no issue. Partway throttle, it gives me some issues. So definitely gonna need to look into fixing that. Um, but overall, yeah, this thing does ride and it is very, very much a lot faster than it was before. And you could, yeah, you can see that, uh, chain issue when I try to use the throttle just a little bit. Definitely going to need to yeah, take some time out to really make sure I have my whole mounting system all good. <laughs> Anyways guys, this was a pretty fun experiment. Um, Definitely gonna be looking to add more to this bike. I think we've got it to the point where we've upgraded it and we've got this thing working at least at least decently well. I, I do think I'm gonna have to, to go through and, and update those uh, mounts for the motor. Just because as we've seen, the chain is 
acting a little bit weird, especially when I, when I try to rev it kind of low. If any of you guys have an explanation for why that might be happening, please feel free to leave that down below because I'd be interested to uh, hear what you have to say about that. But I mean, yeah, this thing is looking good. On top of uh, playing around with the motor mounts just a little bit more, uh, seeing what we can do with that. I'm also looking to add maybe some sort of 3D printed cover here. Um, you know, get that all measured out and, and just kind of screw it in. That way we can cover up the battery and get kind of more of an official. Other than that, I mean, this thing is pretty gosh darn sick. Let me know what you want me to do with this bike. Again, hit that like button. Leave a nice comment down below. Most importantly, subscribe. I will see you guys soon in the next one. Later.